and uh, pro again, a little bit less extensive than the PDM, but I think we also find that in tech support that PDM cases tend to uh, take on a life of their own and, and take a little bit extra time. And our traditional cases like sheet metal type questions are uh, some of the things that happen more quickly and, and, and flow through the tech support team a little bit more quickly. So this is a good example, and that's what Straight From Support is all about is, uh, like Heather just showed us some great reasons why you, know, you couldn't log into PDM. Why won't my sheet metal part unfold? Or maybe more specifically, why won't it unfold and also show me a cut I'm making? Or why is it, uh, why won't it unfold and show me the cut correctly? Because maybe it's showing the cut, but it's not showing it correctly. So it's generically, why won't my sheet metal part unfold? But there really is a lot of facets and a lot of uh, kind of tangents we can uh, run with that question. So I'm going to use this example, this specific example, to show you a, a really great command in sheet metal that I think is still forgotten, and in, in a lot of cases in tech support, we see this as a, as a great solution for a problem. It's called the unfold and fold command. So in this example, we're, we're seeing a bent piece of sheet metal with a couple holes in it, and they do look different. One is kind of oblong, and the other one is kind of uh, more circular shape, you can imagine if the part was flattened. So if we flatten the part, we do see that, right? We see, hey, that, that first cut there on the left, the further left is, is more of an oval or an oblong shape. And then the, the other one is, is actually a circle cut. And in most cases, that's how, if you're gonna put a hole into a sheet metal part, you're gonna do it in the flat pattern when the part is flat and then bend it up afterwards. And so, again, the, the question becomes, when I flatten my sheet metal part, why does my hole maybe show incorrectly, show oblong or show almost like the hole's been stretched out as opposed to seeing it with, uh, you know, with the correct shape in the flat pattern? So again, a lot of different approaches and a lot of different ways I think we could attack that question. And uh, I'm just gonna show you one example where using the unfold and fold method allows you to really create really anything you want to on your sheet metal part uh, while still maintaining uh, your flat and while, while still maintaining everything you wanna see in the flat pattern. So the unfold and fold command are interesting because when we teach them in sheet metal, and in sheet metal, they're taught as bookends, basically. So if you can imagine you have a sheet metal part, you have something really simple, right? So even if I switch out to SolidWorks here, I have a really simple sheet metal part with a couple bends in it. And I say, you know, I don't want to add a, uh, a hole that maybe passes through that bent region. And that's where things can get kind of complicated, right? If you want to pass a, a cut through a bent region, maybe in this first example, right? If we, if we look at this sketch for this first example, I have a sketch that I kind of created up in space. And you can imagine then that that was cut extrude down into the part. And yeah, that works. That's, that's not a bad way to, to get a hole through the bent region. But when flattening this part, that's where you end up with that kind of oblong shape or that, you know, maybe we could call it an incorrect shape of that hole because when the hole is punched in the flat, it's going to be circular. It's not going to be that oblong uh, shape. So let's, let's go back to the, the folded uh, method here. So how can we get a, uh, a hole in our part that maybe passes through a bend, but it shows correctly in the flat, it shows correctly in our, our folded, um, you know, our, 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 our folded state here, and, and everything looks okay from that perspective. So the best way to do that, and again, we teach this right out of the book, right in the sheet metal class, is this unfold and fold method. So let's look at this other hole. Let's look at the approach that was taken to create this other hole that shows really nicely across, uh, across the bend here, and it also shows really nicely when we, when we flatten the part out. And of course, that would be there if we save this out to a DXF or a DWG. So if you look in the tree, the unfold and fold act as bookends for those features. So you could kind of say that, hey, any, any feature you want to add to your sheet metal part, you've already modeled it, you've already created this sheet metal part, maybe this was created in context of another uh, part in an assembly where it wraps around another part, so you modeled it in the folded state. And then you realize, hey, I need to put some holes in that, that either pass through the bent region or, you know, holes relative to something else that's uh, on this face, for example. Uh, how can I do that if I've already bent the part up, if I've already, um, you know, created this part in a bent fashion? Well, your first thought might be to, okay, I'll flatten it, I'll flatten the part, and then I'll sketch on this face. 
and then maybe we'll just create a, a quick cut extrude here with a simple hole. And again, this is just an example, right? I won't even put a dimension on there. So we'll go to features, go right to extruded cut. Because it's sheet metal, you can do cool things like link to thickness. So it'll notice that it's a sheet metal part and automatically link to the thickness of that sheet metal part. And I'll create that hole, and that will work for our flat pattern. But if you notice the tree, that's happening after the flat pattern. So you can imagine if I return to sheet metal and unflatten this, uh, fold it back up, that cut goes away because it happens after the flat pattern. So, okay, I, I've, I've added the cut before the flat pattern, and I've ended up with this kind of oblong shape. I've added it after the flat pattern. And, um, you know, it's great. I can see it. It's the right size when I go to cut this part and machine it, but I can't see it in the folded. So we're kind of stuck in the middle, right? Well, let's get rid of that last cut extrude because I think this fold and unfold method, I'm just hitting delete on my keyboard here. I think this fold and unfold method is somewhere in between. It basically allows you to temporarily unfold your part add a cut and then fold it back up so let's do another example over here so you can see live uh what you know what this example would look like so it's right on sheet metal you'll find it you'll find it grouped in with everything else here so if we go to unfold unfold says pick your fixed face so basically when, when this part's manufactured this is going to be our our main fixed face uh, you know where where the part is being manufactured and what bends do you want to unfold? And that's where you begin to realize that you don't have to flatten everything. This is a, a simple example, but you might have a sheet metal part with, you know, 10 or 20 bends in it with a lot of edge flanges and a lot of hems and, you know, a lot of complex uh, sheet metal geometry. Here I could just say simply, let's unfold just one bend. So all I did was pick that one bend that goes through there. I could hit collect wall bends, but I'm not going to do that in this case. And we'll hit green check. So it temporarily unfolds that bend. If you notice, it also went before the flat pattern. Now I can sketch anywhere. Maybe I'll just sketch on this face here, begin a sketch. And again, we'll just do a really simple circle. The circle can be anywhere, can be centered on the bend or centered anywhere in the, in the body itself. We could put a dimension on it and locate it and all those great things if we wanted to. For the sake of time here, we're just gonna go right to features, extruded cut, I'm going to choose that same option we chose before to link to thickness. Normal cut is another really great sheet metal option with optimized geometry. This is how you know that you're going to end up with a perfectly, uh, call it normal cut into the file where it maintains perfect uniform wall thickness and it's, there's no tapering or, or drafting to any of the faces. It's a nice normal sheet metal cut and we'll hit green check. So I get my cut in there. And then as you might guess, you know, even if we wanted to add some more features, maybe we add a few more cuts, a few more uh, geometry changes in this uh, part, then at the end of it, we can go back to sheet metal fold and basically do the opposite. This is my fixed face. This is the bend I want to go ahead and fold up and we'll hit green check. It takes that cut we made and actually folds it back up to where it was before. So if we now flatten our part, I'll just hit flatten and we'll see this part in the flat pattern and then we'll unflatten it. Those features, let's zoom in so we can see what happened there. Those features are new unfold here and the new fold there. They act as bookends or as um, almost like brackets, right? That hold in those features that you want to add to your part. So the best way to look at this approach is this allows you to temporarily flatten your part or temporarily flatten a sheet metal part while adding some cuts to it, adding some features, uh, adding some things that will be in the manufactured flat pattern, and then uh, adding the ability to fold it back up, which is really cool. It allows you to kind of get the best of both worlds here, add some things um, to the folded part that still show in the flat pattern. So that's, um, that's really beneficial. Um, definitely um, something right out of the sheet metal book. So if things like this are, are interesting to you or, or if you have any further questions about that, uh, we, we could certainly uh, help you out and, and teach you that in the sheet metal class. But that's pretty much it. It's just, again, something simple that we see into tech support. Someone says, hey, I, I want to add a cut, but when I flatten it and add the cut, I don't see it in my fold, right? So it's a, kind of a simple example. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys got something from that. And, and if you have any follow-up questions or any other sheet metal ideas, you could certainly let us know. Heather, I'm going to toss it back to you.
Thank you, Dan. All right, and let me pull mine back up. Nice. As has Heather's pulling up her presentation there too. Like the other, the other approach for that sheet metal idea is if you've modeled your part flat. A lot of people model flat and and sketch bend and fold a part up as you go. That allows you some more freedom for adding those cuts, but in also a lot of cases, like we saw there, you might model it folded from the beginning. So it's it's just different <coughs> approaches. Cool. Thanks, Heather. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Uh, that's a lot of good information. Like you said, right out of a sheet metal book, but always a great refresher on sheet metal because there's a lot of little intricacies of that. Okay, so what we're going to do uh, now is we're going to do how do I create custom weldment profiles part one, two. So if you guys are there for part one, we actually talked a little bit about how to get new weldment profiles and how we can get those. So be sure to check out that uh, webinar. But at the end of that webinar, we also created this custom weldment profile. We created like an angled C channel. But like I said, we only created one of them. So we have this three by five by two size. And let's say we're in a situation where I actually want a lot of these. I want these to be lots of different sizes. Maybe I need them to be different sizes. How can I do that without having to make 500 individual different parts? So we're going to go in and learn how we can do that in SolidWorks. So I'm going to pull up SolidWorks. Just a little refresher from last time. If you don't remember where your weldment profiles are, you can go up to Tools, Options, File Location, and just hop down to Weldment Profiles, and this is the location where your weldment profiles are located. And I only have one location here. You guys might have a few. But if you navigate to this folder, this is that custom C channel that I created earlier. And remember, I created it, I put it in a custom Wellman's folder, and now if I draw a new part, please open up a part template, thank you. So if I go and I draw a new part, And I go and make it into a weldment. I know a simple line really isn't what you, a very fancy weldment profile, but it does the trick. I go to my custom and I go to my angled C and I click this line. Very short weldment channel here, but I can see that custom profile that I created is there. But what if I don't just want a three by, a three inch bottom, five inch top by two, uh, inch one, what if I need these in different sizes and different configurations, and I don't want to have to keep remaking it every time. So I actually have the option to do this using configurations in SolidWorks. So I'm going to close this out, and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and open up that Wellment profile just so I don't have to recreate that guy. But before I do that, let's name, name him All right, so we have this. I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up, and I actually find it easier just to drag and drop because if you notice, it's an SLD LFT, and that's a SolidWorks library file. And if you don't remember from last time, we saved it like that by going to File, Save As, and saving it as a library part file in our Weldments folder here. So I have this file right here. I created my sketch, but it, I say, you know what? I want a lot more of these. I want <clears throat> more ways that I can go in and change them. First of all, you'll notice I have all my dimensions are labeled right here in the library part. That's actually gonna be very helpful in just a second. So I have my library part. It's a weldment profile. It has a spot where it starts at. 
it has everything I need to create that, but now I want to create some more sizes. All right, well, I'm sorry about that, guys. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go into my properties. So I'm going to click my custom properties. I'm going to go into the configuration specific properties. So these are properties that hold for a SOLIDWORKS configuration rather than being an overall property of the part. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to name it, I'm going to make a property name description. And what I'm going to call this is that name I had for it originally. So it was a three to five inch by two inch, because it was two inches in height, by 0.25, because that's my thickness there. And I accidentally clicked a dimension. Don't do that. So I have my dimension. Actually, it's 0.125. Sorry about that, guys. So this was the dimensions of my part. This is the first property I need here. So I've named it what I want to name it here, and I hit OK. And now I want to go in and I want to configure this part. So exit the sketch. And I'm going to right click on the sketch one and select the option to configure feature. So I have my part tree here. I right click on sketch one and I'm going to go in and configure feature. And I'm going to make a few configurations of this part. So let's select the dimensions that I want to change. So I want to change, show the dimensions here. I'm just moving this over so it's a little bit easier to see. So I can see all my dimensions by double clicking on it. So I want to change, well, let's change the bottom length, the top length, and the height. All right, let's pretend we're going to keep the same thickness going through. So these are the three that I would need to change. And on the bottom down here, I'm going to click the option to show custom properties. So right down here, show custom properties. This allows me to see that description column. So I now have the three dimensions that I'm going to be changing and their descriptions. So I'm going to make a few new configurations. So I'm just going to make three, So, let, but you could see how you can make several. So I'm going to do a four to five by still two by, and the thickness is the same, so that doesn't matter. So it's going to be a four here, five here, and still a two. Let's do a bottom being a two to five by three in height, so this is going to look a little bit different. So it's going to be a two to five by three. And you can see here, I can just go through and make infinite number of configurations with these guys. And here in the description, I want to change their description name so it shows up properly when I go to pick the weldment. So four, five, two, and they're all still 1.5. And this guy is 2 by 5 by 3, by 1.5. And then I'm going to hit this Apply button. And I'm going to hit OK. And what I can see here is I now have different configurations. So I have one that looks like this, one that looks like this. And if I go to look at my custom properties, I can see that I have configuration specific custom properties that show um, the description that I've picked for that file. And I could go through here and 
make sure that they're all in existence. I could add maybe a few more. I could uh, do anything I really wanted with this, but I'm going to stick to three and hit OK. I'm going to save this guy. So it's been saved as that SLDF, SLDLFP. So it's a SOLIDWORKS library file. I'm going to close out of this guy. I can see when I pull up my file locations. So remember that was in C, Program Files, SOLIDWORKS Corp, SOLIDWORKS, English, and then Wellman Profiles. In my custom, I can see that that angle C channel was last updated just now. And now let's go and test it out. So I'm going to create a new part. I'm going to draw my sketch again. So let's make a really long line and let's make this 12 inches. And let's give it a joint here so we have a more realistic looking weldment. And let's make this guy. 24 inches. All right, so I have this angle that I'm going to change into a weldment. So I'm going to go to my weldment, structural member, custom weldment profile, angled C channel. Actually, one second, you know what happened there. So I moved it up a folder. It actually accidentally left it, worked one down, so it wasn't finding the file. Let's try that again. I'm going to get a structural member. Angled C channel configured. And here I see all my different configurations. And I can just pick my group. And I can do that. And I could switch it to one of the other configurations here. And you see that the weldment profile has changed. And so now that I can confirm it, I could go back and make a bunch more weldment profiles if I want. I want to show you guys what I did there. So the step I skipped a little bit and the step I just did real quick. So I went into my custom weldment profiles. It used to be in this angled C channel folder because I was going to have to create five of them in order to get five different. But now that I've configured it, I just put it up at the top level under custom weldment. So this custom weldment angled C channel. It puts a little configured thing after it. And it just sees that it, all of the configurations that it has. And it goes and picks these and allows them to go through there. So it automatically picks all of them based off of the configuration. All right. And that's all I had for you guys concerning custom wellment profiles. It looks like we're running just on time. All right, so we've hit the question portion. I'm going to pull up the chat in the question and answer. Does anybody have any questions they want to throw out? Dan, did you have any comments, questions about yours or anything else we've gone over today? No, but you know, maybe I'll take this opportunity to remind everybody we're approaching the release of 2020. And uh, we have rollout events, local rollout events for pretty much everybody. So if you check our website, there's a list of local events. And sure enough, there'll probably be one close to you uh, to come out, check out on all, all the new features, uh, get some lunch, and uh, hang out with us for a little bit. Yep, and uh, Pierre and I talked about this last week, too. But remember, okay. uh, he's going to be at, um, I forget which one Pierre is actually going to be at. Sorry about that, Pierre. But I'm going to be at the Hershey one. So if you guys want to talk straight from support and you want to go to Hershey, Pennsylvania.